We officially, officially, yeah. for for real good. Before we get started, be sure and go check out allyammunitions.com or if you're in Midland, Midland. It still sounds weird when I say it. Uh, be sure and go by Ally Outdoors. Today, we have a special guest. It's my dad, Dan Chandler, Mr. Chandler, Mr. The Original Judge. <laughs> uh, I'm basically just going to ask, ask a bunch of questions about, about hunting. Figured that'd be be the best way i mean clearly he went hunting this morning i've been a couple times <laughs> as as far as and i'm sure you've told us this uh when did when did you go first hunting was it white i'm assuming it was whitetail hunting uh, uh i went with my dad we dove hunted and he squirrel hunted a little bit but by the time I was 12, 13, he started taking me deer hunting in South Texas. It was, man, we should have, I should have told you to bring it. Is that when you got that uh, lever action 308? I got that. I was about 13. That was my first deer rifle. Awesome gun, I think. Do you remember what model that is? 88, model 88. Winchester. It'll goddamn near break your collarbone when it still has a metal butt plate. Ooh. Uh but he still hunted with it. He was still hunting with it when he first came out here. Yeah. You still you would carry he'd bring it in uh that thirty out six. It's a Remington seventy four hundred. Does that sound right? It's a semi automatic thirty out six. Yeah. Uh actually the first deer killed out here was Daddy. And that he was carrying that thirty out six. Thirty out six. That's a <laughs> that's a <laughs> kill anything in North America. <laughs> I'm sure some people love that you said that. Uh, especially Miles. That was the, for him. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like I said, you're still using that a lot when you first come out here. Definitely. But then. I don't know if it was that year or the next year when uh, we were sitting in the stand together and we, I might have made you shoot my rifle out of suppress and you was like, that's the way to go. That's nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> uh. As far, okay, so I really think it was the next year when that happened, when we were sitting in the stand and I just handed you my gun and was like, shoot that deer. Uh yeah, that was the next year, yeah. and that's what sold you on suppressors. Because I remember, well, I especially remember you saying it the the following year. Because by the following year, I think you had your suppressors. Because we you we went that one. year, and I said I'm gonna get you a suppressor for Christmas, and it surprised me that it's like I'm gonna get me one another one. So he, you. Bought two suppressors, essentially got two suppressors at the same time. You had them the following year, and I remember the first time you went to the stand with that, you know, having your own suppressor on your own rifle, because I also got you uh, shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor. I won that, remember? It was a Ruger American. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. I won that on a rifle. Yeah. And you kind of did a little customized for it. Uh, but yeah, I won that in a rifle, a raffle. And I remember he texted me and he was like, these deer didn't even, cause I, t I made him go shoot some does. He said, these deer didn't even leave. They just stood there. Yeah. <laughs> now I've definitely got way off subject where I was going to originally going to go with this conversation. <laughs> cause I, you know, I think it's most people daddy's age don't. They don't really uh, pick up the new technology very well. Like they'd, they'd still be shooting the thirty out six, the three hundred eight, and all that shit. And they definitely wouldn't have suppressors, and especially where Daddy's from. <laughs> uh, yeah. You don't see a lot of them up there no. where I live. When he, uh, 
when when you first got your su- suppressor paperwork, you showed a few guys at work. This is pre-retirement. Uh, they're what they said to Daddy when he's showing them like the suppressors and all that stuff was uh, I found quite hilarious because I think what was the first remark? Is that even legal? Yeah, uh, <laughs> they didn't call it a suppressor either. Silencer. Uh, that silencer thing. What what are the cool kids call them nowadays, Fitzy? Oh, a little bit of both. <laughs> Depends on like because some people get hyper fixated. Yeah, but I don't know. It's it's a uh, you know, like I said, most people daddy daddy's age, uh, they just don't. They're just not adopting new technologies. And daddy's always like super curious what I've got cooking on and everything else. Like he's always like, "What are you doing now?" And uh, daddy now has. He hunt. He likes a six point five creed a lot. He's killed a lot of shit with it. I mean, over yeah. the since you've got it, like pigs, white tail, those Coats, goats, cows, yeah, all kind. It's crazy. It works really well. You know, I mean, that had to have been how long? Two thousand seventeen when you got the six point five creed. Is either seventeen or eighteen? I don't remember. Probably now. eighteen. So you've had one since 2018. You shot all those white-tailed pigs and everything else. Have you lost any animals yet? I've never had one even run off. I mean, really. Uh, I've been very pleased with yeah. the 6.5. Uh, didn't, uh, I could be wrong. Didn't Daniel and them shoot their all dead with your 6.5 creed or they have someone else's? That one time we went down there. I feel like they grabbed your gun. I think Daniel might have shot his. It was the first one. I thought it was Daniel and Zach shot it with yours. Which they were three, four hundred, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Everybody knows how goddamn tough and all that is. I mean. Yeah. I I never didn't find mine. Yeah. The only one I got to shoot. Uh, It fell down a goddamn cliff. That was the time I almost fell off the mountain chasing uh, Williams, all dad. Yeah. Uh, and we never found Daddy's literally just rolled off, and we never found it. Uh, but they shot. You remember the yardage? It was eight sixty three on mine. And then Williams was scotched more. No, that was a little bit less. Oh, not much. Which I, mean, I it was real. Real close. Was, I wouldn't even. At this point, William had just killed a deer, like that season prior. Right. And just Daniel's like, oh, Blade's got the rifle set up. So get down there, and shoot. <laughs> get down there and shoot. And uh, they both, Daddy and William, shot some. Uh, backing up again. <laughs> so y'all started hunting in South Texas, whitetail deer hunting. Uh, Three hundred eight was the caliber. Do you remember what ammo he was using? By any chance? Winchester, probably. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't remember for sure. Whatever. Back then, <laughs> it was Gibson's. Gibson's. We didn't have a Walmart. It's Gibson's. Yeah. That's usually where he got his stuff. And uh, the scope that was on that may be sitting right over there on that shelf, as a matter of fact. Because didn't I take that scope when I put that new one on there for you that Christmas? It wasn't this Tasco, was it? Probably. I started off with something like that. Yeah, it probably is that Tasco. Well, three to nine Tasco, and then when uh, we were kids, we got Daddy a bush nail. I still have it. Yeah, you moved, put it on twenty mag, I think, or something. Put it uh, on something else. Actually, no, it's right there on that twenty-two to fifty, isn't it? I think that's yeah, it. That Bush- is it. Yeah, that is it. Sure is. That's the Bushnell back in the Walmart where that's where you go shop for optics. Uh, I think me and Daniel. And Jimmy. Yeah. Bought Daddy a new scope for Christmas. It's Bushnell. That's it right there. Uh, back in the shiny scope days. <laughs> uh, and then I upgraded him to, I don't remember oh, what yeah. I put on there. 
Might have been a Nikon. A Nikon. I think it was a Nikon. He got me some Nikon binoculars. Yeah. Uh, and now he's finally retired it. <laughs> they were still fine. <laughs> no, I remember when I saw So what I did was uh, daddy was at work, I think. So I, I got all the shit together and went out there. To his house and put it all together for him beside the end. I remember thinking, like, how the, f- how does he shoot this thing? Because what I did was I laid prone, and I caught that metal butt plate to my collarbone. That was a goddamn mistake. <laughs> that was a terrible idea. Uh, but I sighted it in and got it all ready for him and everything. But uh, so y'all hunted in. Do you remember what year this was by chance? When y'all was in South Texas. 74 maybe so y'all hunted in south texas uh did you go anywhere after that or did you know well we left there we hunted in uh jacksboro a couple yeah. of years then daddy basically quit deer hunting so then we started hunting up there where i live now yeah uh Hunted up there, several areas up in that area, you know, several years. Started taking y'all when y'all were kids. Uh, how wherever old, I could go. How old was we when you started letting us basically mess up your hunting? <laughs> uh, y'all were little, you know, six or eight. Daniel's probably eight and you was probably six. Or maybe younger than that, yeah. five and seven. Y'all were little. I started taking Daniel and you as a baby, you'd be crying, wanting to go. But but by the next year or two, I took both of you. Uh, y'all just went with me. Yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of kept going from there. Yeah. From, uh, let's talk about the beaver story for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, just just to add, Daniel was way more serious about it than you were. Yeah, uh, you you'd be over there playing, throwing sticks and <laughs> looking for bugs, whatever yeah. you could do to keep your attention. Daniel would sit. He looked like a tree sitting there. He wouldn't move at all. He, I don't even know if he blinked sometimes. Uh, he was that serious. He still is to this day. Pretty, a, as a little kid, he was that serious. He's pretty eat up with, well, nowadays, it would be great if he'd actually come out here and get on a podcast. Nowadays, he don't, he don't seem like he's that in love with whitetail hunting anymore as much as he is mule deer. Yeah, he he prefers mule deer hunting, uh, which he killed. God, he's already well. He's already killed two good ones this year. This year, yeah. One in Oklahoma, one in Mexico, uh, Mexico and they're going back again. Uh, do you remember what year that was when we got the those guns? Because I was trying to. I should have went and dug up the pictures because I know there's pictures somewhere with us with Pop on the guns. Someone has to have them, but I just, I'll never, you know, I'll never forget <laughs> the look on daddy and Daniel's face when they're like, what'd you shoot? <laughs> I'm like a beaver. Then, <laughs> then, then what kind of look did we have? Well, it's probably like dumbasses go to the house. Disgust. <laughs> it scared me the yeah. first shot. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you wouldn't shot yourself or right. something. Because we were uh, we were just sitting against them old big trees down there, which they're they're still there, ain't they? Yeah. Didn't didn't you climb up in that stand ahead up in it? I don't remember. Or was we just sitting down there we're at all, the base? That of, that day was all sitting at the base of the trees. <laughs> but uh, I remember. <laughs> I wonder how old the trees are. I remember thinking they're gargantuous when we were little kids. You know, they might as well have been goddamn redwoods to a little kid. Well, a storm did take one of them out, but 
there's a couple of them still there. Uh, but that's, in the tree's life, that's not that long ago. I mean. Right, yeah. But, I, you know, it's 1990-something best I can figure. Oh, yeah. You know, as Brody would say, mid-1900s. <laughs> uh, probably 96. Right. I don't, I don't know. 94, 95, I don't know, but. Yeah, in the 1900s, yeah. <laughs> as far as, you know, we hunted around, uh, we hunted around basically, I remember, go, you know, we had the lease in Clarksville uh, with Barry and them. We hunted down the road at that one ranch. I can't remember, you know. I remember that was, it was that, that place Gosh, dang, I can't remember the people's name. It was that place that me and Dustin took the white truck and camped and ended up sleeping in a cab because the mosquitoes were so bad. You remember that ranch? The Four Deuce Ranch? Might have been. I don't. Going we, towards Detroit? Yeah. We hung there Deuce. for, it seemed like a couple years. I remember that yeah. was the first place I remember seeing like a big buck. Yeah. And it, I think I had just shot or shot at or something, a spike. And then I seen it, the big bug. Or, you know, I, it was probably just a little low. <laughs> it was probably, probably wasn't even big. But it was just big to us. You know? I, I seen a big one over there. Well, I missed it, matter of fact. Uh, me and Chastity was over there. Yeah. And I missed one. Uh, it was pretty far, but it, it was some good deer over About there. 170 yards no it was <laughs> it was two or three hundred yards i mean it was pretty far for back it was then definitely yeah back then it was and i was trying far. to shoot it in the neck yeah uh just what we did back then uh, as far as uh do you remember what year it was because i talk about this a lot or the first time I remember going predator hunting was me, you, and Daniel on that, you know, 250 four wheeler. We just drove back there. Literally, where we, right there, where we, you know, I shot at the beaver. Yeah. There's a lot of hunting be, done that little old bitty corner oh. over the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all camp back there yeah. sometimes. Uh, do you remember what year that was? By any chance? I remember, th I feel like I was pretty young. I was going to say it's probably within a year of shooting at the beavers. I mean, it's. And this is the light we're using right here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we pulled down there, Fitzy, in the dark. <laughs> Sit there for a while. Daddy, I remember Daddy had a mouth call, which Daniel, Daniel lost it some years later. I believe, or maybe that was, I'm thinking of a knife. I feel like Daniel lost it, but daddy called in something and we, you know, I just remember when he turned on the light, which no tell what it was. I feel like it was probably Bobcat. I think it was a Bobcat. Uh, the eyes were there. I just remember thinking that's the coolest thing in the world. Uh, which I mean, we end up seeing, you know, when we got, a few years later, we'd go out there by ourselves and hunt, you know, back there in that corner. Me and Dustin, for whatever reason, we'd always see bobcats, and we never shot one. I think Dustin tried one one time with his little single shot 410 and missed it. But there was tons of bobcats. We've seen a few you know, back there. fox back there, yeah. too, uh, back then. We had, uh, is Ark still alive? I think so, yeah. So there's this neighbor of Daddy's, Fitzy. Uh, he'd let us hunt on his, you know, his land backs up to Daddy's. He'd let us go over there and hunt on his stuff back then he would. But he'd always tell us kids like these. I remember some wild-ass stories. You know, I didn't know at the time, but thinking back on it, it's probably a pretty wild story. But it, he'd always tell us shit like, you know, there's a pack of wolves running back here. <laughs> Stop cuts. I right. think he was just trying to scare us. Might be Sasquatch. I mean. Yeah. Like, he was kind of. Oh, that guy. You told me about that guy. Uh, his name was Art. He was kind of. Yeah, because I, I remember I said Art Bell. You know, that was the conspiracy yeah. radio. Uh, 
He was kind of, he'd tell you some stories about some wolves. Pack, he'd, like, he'd, he'd be like, they run this ridge over here. <laughs> yeah. So y'all beat, y'all watch out. Yeah. And uh, he had, so his deer stand, and I, you know, there's a reason why I'm going into the deer stands because I think like the progression of hunting that daddy's been gotten to see over the years, you know, let alone us, but daddy starting out, you know, Back in the Gibson's ammo days, and uh, that rifle he got when he got it was probably like top of the line, I figure. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, Winchester, nice. like lever action 308. Uh, but his deer stand was just four seater logs with car, I think it was carpet nailed across them, and yeah. it had a tr- old truck camper at the top, and you just pile a bunch of brush over it. And that was that was a deer stand. I, I remember as a kid thinking that was the coolest goddamn deer stand in the world. It worked great. I shot a nice eight point out of it, out of that stand. Mm-hmm. Huge eight point for up there. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then you know, like I said, we uh, tree stands was a thing. Yeah, a lot of ladder stands, homemade ladder stands, and ground blinds. I remember I used to just love making ground blinds. I, I guarantee at one point back there in them woods. I had probably had about 47 ground blinds built. <laughs> hey, you'd, you'd see tree limbs stacked around. That's a blind. That's... I, was, I don't know what, it, you know. We did it a lot. It was probably just, you know, that thing in me that likes to build shit. I, don't... <laughs> I just build ground blinds constantly. Uh, I was I was doing it before the, the internet people made it cool, Fancy, uh, you know. Well, bush crafting. Oh gosh! <laughs> so, uh, I guess you probably did. You pretty much hunt around there. I mean, I know we went to Clarksville for a little while. You pretty much hunt around there until we started dragging you out well, across Texas to deer leases. You know, Daniel and Jimmy got on that lease in South Texas, and we yeah. went down there. <laughs> had a ball yeah uh you know they they killed some deer i finally shot a doe uh just to shoot a deer but yeah it was a great time yeah uh that was a uh, you know you were i don't know probably junior high yeah huh daniel was just old enough to drive wasn't he somewhat something maybe, like, maybe 17 yeah he might have been 16 17 i wasn't very old uh, I don't even think I killed anything, which I probably could have hit it anyways. <laughs> uh, uh, and then, so, you know, you moved. There's that lease. They didn't stay on there another year, did they? Or did they stay another year? Uh-uh. No, they, they moved didn't. out to Jacksboro next, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, so, it was, I mean. Well, I kind of joined him. Jacksboro or Graham, yeah, over in that area. Then we went on out to Childress yeah. from there. Uh, just kept growing, kept, getting further away, and <laughs> kept going further north or, or more north, north and west, and more expensive. And my wife said, "When's it gonna end?" Yeah, I, said, I, was, I don't know. That's one of my <laughs> que- <laughs> when I die. Probably. <laughs> one of my questions is. Do you remember what you paid for Clark's full lease? It was sixty dollars a year. <laughs> sixty dollars. I had how, to save to get get the money to pay it. Do you remember how many people were on that lease? Five of us. How big was it? Oh, it was about one hundred and fifty acres. <laughs> but you didn't realize. Yeah, I remember. It's, it's all woods. The only thing I remember about that place is it's all woods. Because wasn't that like pine plantation type stuff? It was for logging yeah. woods, yeah. And I remember it was there was always water everywhere. It was During real flat and low. You know, it swamp. Early bow season, it was a mosquito nightmare. Yeah. Uh, still warm enough. You didn't even want to get out of the truck when you pulled up. You mm-hmm. could hear the mosquitoes buzzing. Uh, but, yeah, it was water standing everywhere, just flat. But I did... I shot a nice nine point over there, but it didn't kill it. And a week later, a guy next to us 
end up shooting his same yeah. deer. That deer lease Fitzy is uh, where I'm pretty sure May Daniel and Scooter nearly lost their lives. So Daniel, no, I don't even know if Daniel was old enough to drive. Scooter was. Yeah, he was. He was just old enough. We had went to Daddy's. I think Scooter brought us. Yeah. In his, uh, what would that be, his grandpa's truck? Yeah. So, you know, they're, Daniel and Scooter that age where they run running around everywhere. Well, they did run around everywhere uh, in his grandpa's truck. So then Daddy, I don't remember what your, you know, daily driver was, but his, the old 82 Ford was what we took to the deer lease. That's what, that's what I drove. That's all I had. I don't think you had something else then. I don't think so. So, this was in the fuller days, Fitzy, and uh, you couldn't hunt without one. <laughs> we uh, we got tasked to load the fuller, get everything ready to go, and we was going to just go the next morning. I think we loaded it that night, like when we got in, if I don't remember, but whatever the case may be, uh, someone, no one closed the tailgate good. And the goddamn fuller fell out going down the highway. And uh, let me tell you something. That is very particular about his ATVs, vehicles, everything else. And this fuller uh, was very important. <laughs> very key piece of uh, equipment. <laughs> it was very, it was, I mean, it was nice until the day he got, got rid of it and got a different one, but the only thing that's, I'm pretty sure the only thing that saved us from not being just beat to death that day was it had this little rack extension on it for carrying stuff. And when it fell out of the back of the truck, that rack caught it and it just, it literally went straight down and just zoomed forward. And literally, I think it passes, didn't it? Passes it in the got ditch. Got by us, <laughs> went off in the ditch. And nothing happened to it other than like it scuffed the rack it, up and how i don't know because it was probably yeah. going 60 what 70 miles an hour it didn't turn over or nothing uh, uh that's jesus christ on our side that day i'm asleep <laughs> beside daddy wasn't daniel and scooter behind you yeah yeah somehow this son of a bitch didn't, didn't get destroyed in nine million pieces like i just and I'm pretty sure Daddy even told us that's why we weren't getting beat that morning. Because <laughs> nothing happened to the floor. <laughs> well, oh. Needless to say, I got woke up. Daddy was pretty hot. <laughs> I was beyond mad, <laughs> if that's possible. And what do you think? <clears throat> what do you? Th who do you think got the blame for this? <laughs> Regardless if it was my fault or not. Well, my, uh, my, everything I've heard about you growing up, it sounds like you were the, the fuck up. I was, but also I got blamed for literally everything that Daniel and Scooter did as well. Yeah, that's what happens to the fucker. That's I was the same way. <laughs> Wade was a little accident prone. Yeah, if, if something was going to happen, it generally happened to me. And then the rest of the time, it was literally just Daniel being a conniving little asshole and blaming everything on me. Because they just knew it. That, that everybody like, oh, it's just Wade. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, you know. I don't remember. I just remember thinking, Jesus Christ, we're not even to the deer lease yet. We're about to die. <laughs> we're about to die right here on the side of the highway. Uh, but I, I still don't know how that, that thing just didn't. <laughs> I could just see it rolling and tumbling down the highway. But... Oh, it would have been destroyed. But uh, So past that, you know, y'all literally have moved, you know, because at a certain point, I got kind of got completely out of deer hunting for a while. Yeah. Until, well. I didn't understand until, that, but yeah, you did. Wasn't my thing. I, you know, Daddy took me predator hunting for the first time, and then I got into, in high school, I went with a real predator hunter. And I, remember also, I also remember thinking, like, that guy was crazy, but looking back, like, he just, he was serious about it. <laughs> Eat up with it? Yes. Uh but in high school is when I really started kind of getting eat up with it. And then later on, I really got eat up with it. But I don't know. I still, you know, I still whitetail hunt more than most whitetail hunters. But I still don't enjoy it quite like I do coyote hunting and all that. It's just, I don't know. It's way different for me. Uh, so as y'all, you know, basically at that time, 
I was just cow hunting and doing whatever. Daddy and Daniel never just steadily moved across Texas to, to do better deer leases, building. Went from probably, you know, sleeping in jack shit where, all the way up we to, can find. Yeah, to building cabins and all kinds of shit. Like, the, more and more serious as time no, went on. Way nicer. Everything got nicer and yeah. more expensive and Hey, when that first lease she was talking about was sixty dollars, mm-hmm. we moved over there to four deuce. It jumped to three hundred dollars. What are we gonna do? That's <laughs> uh, what what my wife said. Uh, so, uh, you know, sixty three hundred. I mean, they're progressively definitely getting more expensive as time goes on. What what is uh? I don't know how to like put this question. What is like a typical rate you would expect to pay on leases nowadays? You know, like the ones where the one we're on up there in Oklahoma, I don't know. It's so much an acre and it's a huge ranch. So yeah. you're looking at a lot of money. Yeah. You know, so three to four thousand dollars a person. Right. On the average, probably. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's unreal, but that's the going yeah, price. It's fetching it easily, right? Uh, the funny thing is, like as time goes on, the leases go up in price, and then you, as time goes on, you kill bigger deer and you try to like. How is I know that's changed a lot in your world as far as like what y'all used to do, which is like. We're going to shoot deer to eat them. We're going to shoot a deer. Yeah. To nowadays, like, how it, how has that been, not only for yourself, but as far as, like, watching how shit's changed across Texas or the world, whatever, you know, from people just hunting for meat all the way up to, like, you know, the trophy hunting and everything else. Uh, Some people can't make that change. Right. Uh, you know. It, I struggle with not shooting some deer sometimes that I would have easily shot before, but, uh, and it's getting better, easier for me to let them pass. But, you know, and I, I know exactly that's how you get better deer. Right. Uh, you know, definitely. But, uh, just growing up the way we did, it never happens. Uh, you know, Daniel said he made made the trans transformation in me, getting started. But <laughs> if I didn't put forth the effort, it wouldn't have happened. I don't care if Daniel right pushed me that way or not. But uh, it's definitely different. Yeah. Uh, and I know there's still a lot of people that can't do that. Yeah. Uh, have that self control. Talking about everybody at Parish, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm not naming any names. But, uh, antler restrictions help that part too. But yeah, not everybody goes by those either. No. Uh, that's just an inconvenience for them. <laughs> uh, as far as like, I don't know. It must be thinking back on it. You know, even for myself, like I said, the the change in equipment. You know, like when we we're kids sitting in the tree stand, overalls, oh walls, probably walls, overalls. If if you did good, you got walls. Uh, you Whatever. never never would have dreamed about heaters and deer oh, blinds and no. Well, <laughs> you know, when we started making those ladder stands and started out of wood and then finally went to metal and this is as good as it gets. Yeah. Uh, and I remember when we moved to West Texas and me and Daniel made some blinds, all metal. We thought we, this is, this is a Cadillac right here. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. And looking back on them while well, there, you'd freeze to death. <laughs> no insulation, but they did have windows. Yeah. Uh, but at that time, and we did come up with some heaters 
yeah. at that time, right about then. You know, but they were nice. Yeah. But now they wouldn't be that nice. Yeah. I mean, you're also going from being in thick woods to, you know, kind of kind of like it is out here. Pretty right. open. The wind open always blowing. Wind. You ain't getting in no, well, out here you sure ain't getting no tree stands. Uh, ain't no trees to put a stand on except for one small ranch. But, you know, wind's always howling. And you know, I like to tell people like that. West Texas cold is a little bit different. I don't, it's just, it don't even have to be 50 degrees out here. I'm, I'm grabbing for a hoodie. Like, yeah, it's, it's different. Back home, you just run around t shirts. And which especially when you get in the thirties and twenties out here, it's pretty damn like this morning. My mine said twenty something. Uh, yeah, 20. mine said twenty six. And uh, there's a nice coat of frost on me by the time I got over there. <laughs> yeah, I that wouldn't want to set out there. With I you wouldn't did. really thought out that well, but I guess it panned out good yeah. for me. I didn't even have a heater, so I <laughs> I thought uh, I was gonna die. We had, we didn't check the bottle situation at Daddy's stand. So. That. That'll be fixed. <laughs> it's just it must you know going from would y'all when y'all hunted out you know with Papa in South Texas would y'all hunt it? Did y'all just hunt out vehicles then, like right around no. the Jeep or? No, we had stands, but it might be a few boards nailed up, and you're behind those. Yeah, that was kind of a ground blind. You know, or you'd climb up a tree and nail a few boards. Mm -hmm. uh, but Daddy made us a stand between trees, nailed up some boards, and something you could actually get in there and set in. You know, but that's that's all you had. Uh, it's how we done it. When, now, when y'all y'all were still doing open sites then, weren't you? Oh yeah. Uh, Joe, my uncle. They always hunted together. He might have had a scope, but everybody else, yeah, had an open sight, and it was a given. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe was a real serious outdoorsman, uh, my uncle. Hunting fish, he, he done it all. Very good outdoorsman. So he had more equipment, better equipment. He was more serious in it than my dad but uh daddy he could shoot anything uh open sight i know you've heard a lot of stories but growing up i seen it mm -hmm. so you always thought well he didn't need a scope yeah he he could hit so good open sight he could hit better shooting from the hip than a lot of people could aiming yeah. He was that good. Uh and I've seen him do it. Yeah. Uh so why and used to ask him, Daddy, why don't you get a scope? I don't want one. <laughs> you know, well he didn't need one's what I yeah. felt like. I seen him shoot a deer open sight at at least three hundred yards and drop it. Yeah. I mean can can very many people do that? Oh, everybody shoots a three away to thirty out six claims they can. That was with a thirty out six. <laughs> also, I was gonna say that <laughs> definitely thirty out six. Uh, <laughs> but when you heard his gun go off, you might as well get ready to get an yeah. animal because he didn't miss. Because you know it was unreal, isn't it? When him and Granny got married, they shot. All the time, because that's all they could afford to do. That was about their entertainment. Uh, and, you know, Mama was, I would have never thought it. She was a good shot, too. Yeah. Or got to be a good shot. Mainly with a twenty two, but 410, too. But, yeah, that's what they did. They'd pick out stuff and uh, just shoot. And I have that twenty two. That they, you know, so I don't know how old it is. No telling how many rounds been down it. <laughs> and it's still, it's a lever action 22, still yeah. in real good shape. Uh, but I still have it. So you, as far as a, 
equipment goes. Start out with open sights. And today, like your 6.5 Creed has the uh, SIG uh, BDX, 318 BDX, where your range finding binoculars will talk, if you want them to, if you need it to, will talk to your scope and give you a holdover. Yeah. Like, I don't know, is that, must be pretty strange <laughs> to see the, see the, well, the advancements in equipment over the years. I've, uh, you know, since you got that stuff for me, it's not a given anymore, but I wouldn't want to hunt without it. <laughs> I mean, it's that nice yeah. for me, uh, you know, to say a game changer would be an understatement, but, you know, to be able to dial that in and, and do a range that easy and that fast, it, it's... What, <laughs> what would it have been like <laughs> going back into the younger days where y'all was doing quite a bit of meat hunting to have the kind of equipment... <laughs> Well, there There's be any no, deer left in these No. <laughs> uh, hey, there wouldn't be any deer we'd kill so many. Because that's what we did. Yeah. But we eat a lot. That's about all we eat yeah. there for a while. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't have been pleasant. <laughs> it wouldn't have been real fair for the deer. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I don't know. You most, but again, uh just going most people um i'm gonna say over 50 are not real well uh, most people not all of them not real open to like trying new stuff uh why are you I, so open to trying new stuff or is it like i better use this or wade won't shut up about it like what, no what's the point? uh you know it's it's just so much better. Why would you not? That's uh, the way I look at it. Uh, hey, but there's there could be more people <laughs> doing that than what you say, old or not. Yeah. Uh, it ain't just about an age, I don't think. Oh, there's plenty of younger people out there that are, you know, you can't use match bullets for hunting. You don't need... My favorite is when they're like, now... Whatever you say you do, now do it with open sides, like those kind of people and all that crap. Like, there's plenty of them that are younger as well, but it's it's much more often older people, it seems, that are definitely on the caliber. I'll just say in the bullets. Now, since you've you know gotten into the six point five creed and stuff like that, uh. You know, what I'm referring to is people go, I want my traditional hunt bullet because I want a blood trail. I don't want a blood trail. <laughs> I want to see it drop. I mean, That's realistically, kinda... <laughs> that may not happen every time, but yeah, uh, I don't have very many blood trails now, you know, maybe with a bow. Uh, <laughs> You know, and I know he how you are about bow hunting. I like bow hunting, but uh, but gun hunting, I I definitely like how uh, using your ammo. I don't think I have any. The only uh, time go off, you had an animal leave is when we tried a different kind of bullet. It was more of a traditional hunting bullet. It was when we was over there at uh. Wish by wish, and it still didn't go very far. Right, uh, I was just trying something new, but uh, I don't, you know, that's that's the one that still baffles me. You know, even the people that'll try the newer equipment, they still want their my my traditional hunting bullet that goes all the way through, and I just I don't get that. Uh, no, I wouldn't either. I, I, <laughs> I just rather know. I'm, you know, I'm just. I'd rather use the bullets go kill them right there or within 10 yards, you know, yeah. depending on the size of the caliber and all that stuff. But as someone who's been shooting a 6.5 Creed for 
whatever we said earlier. Have you had any issues whatsoever leading you to believe that 6.5 Creed is not a good hunting round? No. I'm just going to beat this with hey, to and death. <laughs> and used to, I, I wouldn't want a bolt action gun. Uh, that's, that's just crazy. how I was. I didn't like them. Huh. That's that, crazy. That lever action was my favorite gun yeah. for years. Yeah, I knew that. And and I do like that thirty out six, the semi automatic, but lever action was my favorite gun. Yeah. Uh and my uncle had a bolt action. I I didn't like them. But now that I've had that one and watched you shoot yours, the accuracy and uh seems to be way more than any other gun. Right. But I definitely like that 6.5. Uh, uh, it's certainly killed a lot of animals over the years. I mean, and it not just 100 yards. That's my next thing I was going to ask you. What do you feel the... I still like 100 yards. <laughs> I know that's what you're asking. But what do you... F- what do you think the average shot distance was, say, in Clarksville? Typical whitetail hunt. Oh, you know, 75. <laughs> oh, if you're stretching it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't nothing like we shoot now. I mean, yeah. That, like where I've been hunting here, that 150 yards is a lot of the ranges. It's nothing. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, you'd see me, well, I've showed you the videos of dropping those pigs at 150 yards. You know, you don't even think about it. Yeah. We're used to. That long shot. I hope I hit this. <laughs> I hope it's, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and I, I do, I am sometimes just giving you a hard time <laughs> about the, but, you still got to judge the animal too. Yeah. The range you want to, you want to be sure about your shot. Yeah. Uh, before you shoot, having good glass, you know, it's no secret. We talked about it a bunch of times. A lot of our stands and feeders are too far. <laughs> <laughs> Just right. Uh, they're further than what most people will do, and it's you know. If I had my way, it'd be a little bit further. I just, I just, I really like the freedom you get from being further off feeders. And if I can have distance and elevation, I really like that because it just seems like these deer out here. If you got elevation and you're further, say, around that two hundred yard mark, you can be as free as you want in that inside that stand. And but it does require cell phone cameras, spotting scopes. All that stuff to make sure you know what you're looking at, or if you're having you have a rifle scope, an appropriate amount of magnification to identify properly, and all that. I just with modern equipment and modern ammo cartridges and, and glass and cameras and all that other shit, I just don't see why you'd sit so close to them anymore, unless you just have to because where you're hunting. Yeah. Sometimes well, maybe bow hunting, I might you know get a little well, bit. Well, bow closer. hunting, you have to, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, I just, I, you know, bow hunting. The challenge is the bow. You know, bow hunting, you gotta be quiet, getting close, getting close. But with rifle hunting, what's the point of sitting in bow range with rifle unless it's some sort of like short barreled, you know, supersonic. I mean, uh, subsonic. You know, like you know, I'm sitting your bow stand for and shot and stuff with subsonic, you know, pigs and whatnot, but. I just don't see any reason to be that close anymore with all the advancements, equipment, and everything else. I just, I just don't get, you know, if you're going to be rifle hunting, why not back up a little bit? Give yourself a little bit more freedom to not be so locked down. Make it, I guess, slightly more challenging. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I can tell some of the stands, <laughs> you know, the 150-yard range. That's pretty close. Is is ideal in my opinion, <laughs> you know. Anymore, I used to not lay them like that. But, you know, some of these are about 150. Yeah. Uh, and the ones like where I set this morning is elevated, 
because of the hill yeah. and the range, and you can see good, it's it's a pretty ideal situation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Elevation helps a lot out here, but I I don't want to go no three hundred yards. I like I like the you get out there around two thirty two forty. You get a lot more freedom if you're taking kids or loud people. I have a lot of freedom where I sit. It's just sit by yourself. You know, in bow hunting, I'm very good about sitting still and yeah. being quiet. Always have been. So I can I can get close or I feel like I can. Yeah. If the wind's right, I can I can be still enough and quiet enough. Right. But that's me. That's not with a group. Uh, and it's definitely harder with kids. Uh, oh yeah. Uh. So. What? How? You've used your. You got a six arc. What was that last year? Or year four. When did we yeah. build the mayors? You remember? I think last it was year before last. I think it was. Was it year before? Hell, I don't remember. No, now. it was he, last year. You hunted with it last year. I it know was that. last year because I showed it to a couple of guys at work. I just yeah, got it. It's going to get to that, too. <laughs> so, My machine gun. Yes. So, <laughs> Daddy uh, gets an AR, six arc, clearly. Our listeners are going to know where that was going. You've killed, did you kill a deer with it yet, or did you just kill pigs and pigs and a cow? Uh, How do you, what uh, do you feel about one, hunting with an AR to the six art. I like the six art. Uh, hunting with an AR style gun, it's definitely new for me, you know, especially after getting used to that bolt action. Yeah. You know, and now you got a semi automatic. Uh, it, it's new for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole. Operation. I've never been around an AR, never had one. Uh, and after you showed me the last time I was out here, you know, I even cleaned that one some when I got home. Yeah. Like you showed me. So I know even more about it than I did. And the, I would nearly say the simplicity of them, I, I like it. Yeah. Uh, but I feel very confident with that 6 R. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I hadn't been here 30 minutes. I just got the gun in my hand when you give it to me and shot a pig. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got. I recorded it. Uh, that, that was last I'm year. I'm pretty though. sure I recorded it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I, I like that gun a lot. Uh, that one is. It was yours green or FD? No, it's green. Yeah. That was uh, because I put that green suppressor on it. That's right, kind of match. That was probably, he got you know that first batch of barrels so far. Every single one of them has shot very well. Every single one of them of all the guns we built out of that batch of barrels, which you got one of them, I got two of them. Pitsy got a couple, and then you know all them other guys got some. They shoot very well, but I mean. Uh, I was shooting six arc this morning, which that's a bolt gun, a little bit spicier low than you can run the ARs. But let's go back to your work when you got your AR. <laughs> now, when you when you showed them your AR, did it have the suppressor on it too? Oh, like yeah. a double whammy, a full deal, yeah. <laughs> gun case, everything. Uh, what did they say this time? Uh, you know, they said, that's real nice. Boy, it's a machine gun <laughs> with a silencer. You know. <laughs> and I just agreed. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> I am Sniper. Get out of here. Uh, there was a couple of guys. One guy, he's got an AR, so he he knows what he's looking at. Yeah. Me, um, you know, he don't have a suppressor, but he said, oh, you know, this is. This is top of the line. This is yeah. this is nice. With a case that fits the case good, you know, I mean it's 
the whole setup is he he was thoroughly impressed uh he, cuz he kind of knew what he was looking at but some of those other guys <laughs> you know on a few years ago i might have said the same thing i don't yeah. know uh oh machine gun <laughs> that's what daniel uh, still says you know <laughs> with a silencer what it didn't didn't you have to tell somebody what a six arc was? Uh, there, I remember there being something about six oh, arc. Nearly everybody. I never heard of a six <laughs> arc. They thought I didn't even know what I was talking about. Are you sure? I said, it's a six arc. Uh, six arc. There was uh, there was one of them guys was like, you mean this? You kept going, it's yeah. six arc. <laughs> he didn't say 6.5. He kept saying something else. I said, no, it's a six arc. Are you sure? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> it says it on there, man. It, oh, I love hearing when daddy takes something new up there to them people. Well, <laughs> they're, they're just not gun people like yeah. y'all are. Uh, hey, and you know, I probably wouldn't have one either if it wasn't for you. Right. So they might they might get some down there in Paris about ten years from now. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there any like is there any new gun stores out there that carries anything like that? Well, there's a couple of gun stores there in Paris and in, in that area, but I don't go to them, so I don't know as far as a six arc, but I never hear. Any of the other people in that area talk about a six arc. Right. So I'm going to say no. Yeah. Uh, you know, 6.5 is kind of. It made it down there last year. <laughs> no, it's longer than that. But, well, I won that 6.5 up there. Yeah. But it was new then. Nobody had a 6.5. Yeah. Uh, but does any anybody. When you you know got that, showed them with the suppressors. Did anybody make any snide comments about using six five for like is it like people shit talk six five there or oh, it's just it's still two seventies and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> six point five. <laughs> you know, I like my two seventy. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I like my three oh eight. That lever action, and I still like to shoot something with it just for uh rem right. remembrance kind of yeah uh but it would be more of a challenge yeah. than, than what i <laughs> shoot now i don't care what you do it's still not the same yeah uh, even with the scope on it and stuff and when i shot open sight for several years before i finally got a scope but it still wouldn't be a lot harder. What is it about whitetail hunting? You know, ever since I can remember, you was really into whitetail hunting. You're still into whitetail hunting. You know, don't I don't know anybody other than Daniel, which, again, going back to he's kind of not so much in love with whitetail anymore, but he still will go clump crazy about it. What is it about whitetail hunting that why do you like it so much? I used to try to explain it because my mom asked me the same thing several years ago now. But, you know, when you're sitting out there and it's, I don't get bored. Uh, maybe I have enough patience. I don't know. But sitting out there in the peace and quiet and you think about 900 things, uh, is is some of that. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't know. Maybe I always liked it as a kid when daddy cuz we lived in the edge of town. And that was something we did. I loved it. And uh you know so I still do. Uh I don't know the freedom and the quietness when you're sitting out there you get to unwind 
Mm. It's all part of that, I guess. Uh, but I do like it. Oh, yeah. But I do like killing stuff, too. <laughs> so it's not just about hunting. Uh, how many... How many deer would you say you've killed? Oh. <laughs> oh, back when we used to kill a lot of deer, there's no telling. Uh, hey, when, and I know you missed it, but Charles's family came to Christmas kind of for the reveal, but yeah, and they were in the, we're out there in our shop, and they're just in awe. <laughs> My God, he's got a lot of deer. Uh, yeah. And that's the mounts and then all them European mounts and skulls. And Charles said, that's all he does is hunt. <laughs> uh, no, I worked my whole life. Uh, that's all he does. <laughs> that's what he said. That's what he told his mama. Uh, all he does is hunt. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I go hunting, but no, that's not all I do. Yeah. But to them, they right. were just... I could see him over there. Oh, man. You know, which there's about eight or nine on the wall yeah. of mounted ones. Yeah. And, and tons of Europeans. And a bunch of skulls and horns and sheds. Yeah. So it was overwhelming for them. Yeah, apparently. yeah we just started saving these heads. <laughs> we, and they said, did you kill these? <laughs> I said, yeah, all of these. I said, yeah. I'm thinking that's not but eight deer. I bet it's more about like the size of the bucks. Oh, the yeah. Head. It has to be, you know. When when did you uh, get your first one like full shoulder mounted? Would it have been that 170 or whatever? It was, uh, I think that was a 163. That was the first one, first deer I ever had mounted. Uh, and looking at it now, I mean, it looks good. It's still a nice, I mean, 163 is a nice deer. Yeah. But those mothers look, you know. Right. It don't look as spectacular as it did when I got it. <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot of people will never kill nothing that big unless they pay for it. But, yeah, that was definitely, hey, and I didn't shoot a buck till I was 30. Uh, I shot a lot of does. Yeah. Could have been a spike in there. A <laughs> uh, lot of does. Yeah. That's just all I could kill or, you know, when when Daddy took me hunting, we're deer hunting. Yeah. We seen a lot of does, so we killed a lot of does. Yeah. Which there would have been a lot of, a lot of does in that, that area. Right. You know. That's for sure. Uh, but he and Daddy was, I don't know how old Daddy was. He shot a buck, uh, a little seven point. And uh, I still have it. Yeah. You know, we thought it was the greatest thing. Yeah. You know, a seven point. When I was, I don't, I remember for years, I had to have been like middle school, high school before I even knew. Had even heard anything about, you know, score and all that stuff back or definitely didn't even think about age back then. It was like, did you hear so-and-so killed an eight point, an eight point. Yeah. (laughs) It was all about the points. And I know that shit still exists. uh, Oh yeah. That direction. Uh, Certain area. Yeah. And you know, it ain't nothing about no measurements like you know, that wouldn't even be thought about. They don't even know what that means. It's how many points does that deer have? Well, I have some friends that <laughs> know score and how to score and what that means. And, yeah. You know, but I also have, I know several people, where do you get the score? You know, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, and I, I've had a conversation with me and a guy was talking you know, it was a mature deer, had a big brisket, and and this other guy 
Do they? Does a deer have a brisket? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you just don't know. Yeah. It's uh, it's just different. I mean, I mean, a lot more people nowadays because of social media know. You know, vast amounts more than they did back then. That's for damn sure. Well, but it's you know, still not. It's still not everywhere. Hey, but like when I was probably. Uh, my 30s, 30 to 35, and I got a little more serious in the hunting, read more. You know, I'd look for scrapes, rubs, and I'd tell my dad, boy, there's a good scrape over there. <laughs> well, what's a scrape? You know, <laughs> yeah. He knew he'd see rubs rubbed yeah. on a tree or whatever, but. He didn't know what a scrape was. Yeah. So all those years, I, there's no way I could have known if he didn't know it. Right. Uh, uh, so I learned a lot myself, too. I mean, yeah. You know. Uh, Papa, I actually, my first, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure, my first bow kill was over at Papa and Granny's house, and yeah. Papa watched it from the porch. Yeah, because <laughs> we had a, it was that even put another a stand. little fawn you shot. <laughs> I was uh, pumped about that one too, and they get they, uh, you know, shunned me a little bit over it. But well, uh, Daddy was real proud of you. Yeah, Daddy, uh, Papa was so <laughs> it's just like that's a good shot. That's a good shot. <laughs> I mean, it was a good shot. I shot. The only shot I had was in the neck, and it was a little fawn. <laughs> Cause it was, I couldn't wait five more seconds for it to walk out. It was in between two trees, so I just drilled it in the neck. Which that, back then I shot a lot of bow, uh, quite actually quite a bit of bow back then. But uh, as far as like you know, going from information wise, you know, would like a a hunting magazine would have been the first thing you'd have probably seen like specifically catered to hunting or was it like a tv show you know probably a magazine back then uh definitely not a and you know wasn't no inter you know that we didn't get on the internet and stuff so right back then uh you know like field and stream was a big magazine at, right at that time <laughs> so you definitely if you could get one and read some articles You'd learn a lot. Uh, the more people you could talk to about that did hunt a lot, and if you listen, you could learn a lot. Right. Uh, <clears throat> what do you, hmm, I have some questions because I we definitely need to wrap this up pretty soon because it'll be hunting time. Uh, but I have some questions, and I'm saving the most important one for last. Uh, first question is, what do you think is the most important thing a hunter can do if you want to kill bigger whitetail? Management aside, just from a hunting standpoint, I'm going to go out with the intention of killing a, a good whitetail buck. What do you place number one on importance, like on the list? I guess let the young ones walk. Uh, if you're going to go for bigger deer, you mm -hmm. got to let them get bigger uh, for sure. Patience. Oh, definitely a lot of patience. Because, <laughs> I mean, well, uh, you know, math, I don't do math, but how many years have you been hunting now total? Their amounts? Uh, close to 50. And uh, uh, it's not really a good indicator on how many total years. How, you know, you've killed quite a few. Well, you got eight mounted, children mounted. Well, I got two more at the taxidermy. So two, ten. Are they all? Do you have parameters? Like I'm not gonna shoulder mount it unless it's 150 inches above. Or uh, I used to think that, but. That's not what I look at. If it's 
if I like the deer and it's unique and I can afford to have it mounted, I'm going to have it mounted. Yeah. Uh, sure, I'd want to, you know, when we measure one, oh, 148. Oh, man, I was wanting 150. Yeah. But <laughs> if it don't reach it, it, it just don't. Right. Uh, you know, you definitely want a trophy, but, you know, trophy is what you see. Right. You know. So, I, I mean, I'd consider myself by many people's parameters, you've killed at least 10 trophies. Uh, I would say, you know, watching you from my side of the table, uh, patience would probably be the number one virtue. I'm very, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a very patient person. I don't know anybody can sit and stay as long as you can. I, I just, I mean, I get, I could probably sit in a cabin as long as you do sometimes, but the miller stands, that's too small. I don't, and I, you know, I'm also the type if I ain't seeing nothing, I start getting antsy. I, I mean, I could hang out for a while, especially if I carry a book or read something on my phone, but I ain't sitting there just looking. I mean, if, if there ain't nothing happening, I'm checking out. I don't go look for something. I have a lot of patience. Uh, my next question, I got two more. As, as far as you've been, we've been uh, coyote hunting. We never specifically went out bobcat hunting before, I don't think. Not, not specifically like we're going to go call it bobcat. Right. We've been to fox country and all that. What is your favorite one so far? Well, there's, there's been several times that I've went with you on coyote hunting. Yeah. And, uh. Just slow, or we just it, it'd be slow, and I probably didn't take it as serious <laughs> as you either. But the only couple times that I went with you, fox hunting, yeah, I've never had so much fun as we had down there in South Texas. Yeah, uh, that out out performs any coyote hunting I've been with you. Yeah, uh, because I've never done that before. Right. And that was, you know, I know y'all kept saying y'all could kill a lot more. Well, <laughs> I'm happy for you, but <laughs> I was, I had a time of my life. Oh, that uh, was a lot of fun. You know, that other guy couldn't hit nothing. He couldn't hit that wall, but you know, I hit five in a row. It was quite awful. I was, I was on cloud nine. Oh, it was pretty, know. I'm glad it was, uh. Cause we went to, we went with Ninja Carl one night. And it was kind of slow. Yeah, yeah, very slow. Uh, and I'm like, God, of course, trying to take Daddy Fox on and it's garbage night. But you know that night, that's how, you know, that's some good night nights of fox hunting. And it was super busy. I mean, like the first time we called in, I don't know how many fox. Yeah. I think everything on day side got shot. But everything on the other guy's side did not get shot. And yeah. then it was it was quite comical because uh, there were some characters in the bunch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, if it was like that every time, I'd say let's go more often. I wish, um, you know, we don't have any good Fox Country more or else we would. Because that, that's probably, as far as just like I'm gonna, I want to go out and have fun and not take it as serious and know Either you're gonna, it's gonna be on or it's not. Fox hunting is probably my favorite as far as like a shooting type game, I guess is what you'd call. It. Like it can be more challenging because they're so erratic and they're smaller targets and all that. Uh, whereas coyote hunting nowadays for me, it's just if they're on, we're gonna stick with it. We're gonna eventually get into a big group of them, which unfortunately, for whatever reason, you've never been on like a super action packed no. coyote hunt yet. You know, a few. Uh, yeah, a few here and there. You know, and you may go the next time. Like up there in Paris, you went yeah. up there in town yeah, and killed four or five. And But when I went, we didn't. Yeah. Well, I think we seen one. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, in fact, I killed three on the first stand. <laughs> you know, it's just small parcel hunting. I mean, right. uh, 
What did you think about decoy dogging? You know, other than no. the fact it kind of sucks because it's summer, but hey, that that time when I went with you in Oklahoma, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, a little bit of a on that one good stand when you come up close, a little bit of adrenaline rush there because they come in. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun there. Yeah, uh, that was too. Was it those? Yeah, it was the two right. three-legged coyotes, right. the good one. You know, basically what I kept – well, there was one other good one, but we didn't get to shoot them because the camera and all the dogs and all that. But right. the best one was the two three-legged males that got up there and got super aggressive and, yeah. you know, tried to fight that dog. Fight the dog in close. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they were literally a few yards in front of us a couple times. Uh, but like I said, like, as it pertains to the decoy dog and uh, – we did. We saw quite a few coyotes. Just we're trying to film, and they're sissy coyotes. They're just leaving, you know. But that it all it all begin gets worth it when you get that one good stand. Yeah. Like that's yeah, that's what made it worth it. That was a good uh, way to. That was the last stand of the evening, I believe. That was a good way to end it. Like right there, it was super aggressive. Uh, last question. <laughs> now I know what you're gonna say. I bet. <laughs> In your, I bet I know what your answer is going to be. But you're, you're not like Daniel. You're not just going <laughs> to say whatever. Uh, you're a logical person. You've seen animals for years in the wild and all that stuff. What do you think is smarter, a white tail or a coyote? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, a mature or older cow. Yeah, we'll just we'll put parameters on it versus a mature deer, a mature cow or a mature buck. Which I mean, a mature buck is pretty smart, man. <laughs> uh, you can't compare like during the rut. Yeah, they're not smart there. Uh, yeah. You know, and I figure a cow, it's the same way if they're chasing them. They get stupid. It just doesn't, it's not as prolific and it's not as long as a whitetail. You know, it's a pretty short time frame there. They go plumb goofy. Uh, and a, a buck does the same thing. But when it's not in the rut, <laughs> I've seen a lot of bucks do some weird stuff. Because they're smart. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a deer look at me and hide behind a tree. Yeah. I mean, think about that. <laughs> it would do like this and get behind a tree. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it do that. Like it knew. Meanwhile, the coyote sent it out there, Daddy, so he could slip by you. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. But. <laughs> what animal would do that? And I've seen mule deer oh. hide behind weeds. They'll duck their head down, be looking at you. They know. They knew that. They know. <laughs> they're stupid. They better hide. <laughs> and mule deer, they're not smart, but <laughs> it's still done that. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely. This is what I tell people all the time. It's never a fair comparison. No, it's not. Because y'all are whitetail hunters, y'all aren't coyote hunters, or y'all aren't whitetail and coyote hunters. Y are, well, y'all aren't hunters, but y'all's main quarry for years have been deer. You know, y'all, y'all's experience with coyotes is seeing them out of the stands, you know. Yeah, and I'll shoot a coyote to... I might mess up a deer hunt to shoot a cow. Yeah. Whereas, you know, other people's experience is going to be different. Like my experience has been a lot of deer hunting and cow hunting. And I, you know, regurgitate stories all day of stuff I've seen from both of them. Cause I, I will agree. Uh, older bucks are pretty smart, but, uh, I'm going to have to give it to the cow myself. <laughs> As you seen, should. I've seen, I don't know. I've seen way smarter behavior of cows. Uh, any of them, this is the thing I will say. 
most humans, there ain't no cow or whitetail smarter than a human. Most humans. You can kill either one of them if you're just smart and patient. Like yeah. That's that's yeah. what it boils down to. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably wrap it up because it, uh, it's literally time to go get the stand. Yes, sir. Uh, Fitzy, any final thoughts, questions? You want to... Embarrassing stories you want to ask dad about or <laughs> We already we already got through to your your childhood trauma last week. <clears throat> uh tell me I feel like I had one more, but I can't remember what it was. Um uh, I don't know. I'm glad you finally uh I've asked you a few times. I'm glad you finally get, you know, coach you in here. Well I I did appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> Uh, might need to. I'd like to get you and Daniel in here on yeah. this like bullshit session, and maybe put a few drinks in both of you. <laughs> it would probably work, <laughs> especially Daniel. Like he got a pretty. That's that's when the embarrassing stories need to come. Out. Oh, here's my last question. Uh. Obviously, I cuss quite a bit. Daniel it was is known to cuss every once in a while. Why? I mean, we didn't get it from you. I've, I've mentioned this many a times. I was, I'm try, I was trying to think of this the other day. I think I was 21 before I heard any kind of cuss word come out of your mouth, and I think it was shit. And I remember looking at Daniel like. Well, why is it something you actively try not to do or just not something that's not in your vocabulary? No, I know how to cuss. <laughs> you know, that's not the problem. But as y'all's growing up and and I don't cuss around my family, but I and I as y'all's growing up I did it mostly to teach y'all not to cuss. Yeah. Apparently, I failed. <laughs> I wouldn't say you failed. Uh, Just others that's, around us. <laughs> that's mainly why I've done it. I didn't want... You didn't want us being the heathens that I we didn't turned out to be. I think that's how you have to talk. Yeah. Uh, but I know how, and I do sometimes. Not not necessarily when you just you're mad or... Right. Uh, usually, that's... Uh, primary time but uh but i just try not to right and you got to put an effort into that uh yeah but i i did that like my around my wife or right. my mom and dad i just didn't i didn't want to do that and oh. you know my dad cussed a lot yeah. or a fair amount but, you know so I grew up knowing, learned how to pretty quick. But, <laughs> but I, I didn't want to to show y'all you didn't have to. Right. Uh, is mainly why I didn't. I just didn't want to cuss around my family. Right. So, and I still feel that way. Yeah. But uh, I know how. We'll just assume it was all Daniel's fault. It's been said uh, the reason why I'm, I, I I try not to do it as much nowadays, but they still get out there. The GDs is you know from being around Papa, but uh, and, you know we grew up. That's just how Papa talked when he he never talked that way around you know. Women usually, you know, women, but that's just the way he talked. And uh, I might take after him a little bit in that aspect, <laughs> maybe just a little. You could. <laughs> well, uh, let's get off here and go hunting. Thanks for coming on, Daddy. Well, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time.